Okay, what we've got here today is a uh, working prototype of 3D Studio DOS about a year, almost two years before it was released. This is uh, November of 1988 and the program was released in uh, the latter part of 1990. So this was well over a year and a half before the program came out. This is extre an extremely early prototype that we were working on back then. I'm running this in a DOSBox uh, application under uh, Windows XP and just totally amazed this thing even works at all. Um, you'll notice a lot of things in this that are familiar. Uh, the command columns over here on the right side, that's pretty much it's very similar to the way it was in the final program, but the, the structure of it, this was an early version that used a different uh, format that we were, we were trying out to see how it would work as far as uh, uh, giving you the controls you needed without uh, taking up too much screen real estate and being something reasonable. Uh, you notice as I click on Vertex, it gave the options that are available for it. If I right click, it would go back to the, the adjust options, you go to polygon, and give those. In this particular case, it would leave the selection where it was and drop the uh, options, the control, the commands basically below it. Uh, we also had a version in here that we could go over and go into the test section and change the choice trees back to an old style. And this stacked them, uh, no matter what you were working with, it always stacked them high on the screen. That, we we went through several iterations of this during during the uh, development, and we this was the original, and then we changed to a different one, and we changed another one yet after that. It was it was quite a process. Jack Powell had us, uh, you know, change that around so it was working a lot more uh, reasonably. I'll go back to the the new format just for grins. The new as of 1988. Anyway. You'll see some familiar stuff in here. The program has a setup for a 2D shaper, uh, some, what we later called the Lofter uh, 3D editor. Uh, and this is so early, materials, lighting, and this other stuff isn't even installed yet. In fact, the, these other functions here, for, for a lot of them, you'll see that they don't, even, they don't have anything hooked up yet. But it's a, kind of a piece of uh, history. Thought it might be kind of fun to look at. The uh, 2D shaper, uh, this was pretty rudimentary. We have our basic functions like creating lines. Uh, there weren't the spline controls were not in there yet for adjusting the handles. In fact, this is so early that uh, the there aren't even the, the it isn't even Bezier splines. They're they're uh, they're only controls are tension, continuity, and bias on the various vertices. Uh, and we later changed that to be much more versatile uh, Bezier with the handles and stuff. Much more familiar to everybody now. But uh, there was a basic curve which used uh, kind of a fixed uh, tension and continuity and bias and then you can go and modify those. We'll show you that in a minute. Uh, you know, typical functions here, quad, circle, ellipse, that kind of stuff. But this was what we uh, started out with just to get the, the, the functions working to make sure it was, uh, you know, heck, we just had to get started somewhere. And gone is not hooked up in here yet, unfortunately. Uh, in fact, uh, the release notes on this version that I that I had uh, uh, basically were asking Jack and Gary what what to do about that if they had any ideas for the interface for it. Uh, let's see. So we've got copy functions. You can copy splines around. You can mirror them. Oh, I guess you can't mirror them. Maybe that wasn't in there yet. You can open them up. Close them back up. If they're uh, open, like this one here. I don't think outline was working. No. Uh, select or selection. You can do uh, at vertex, single vertex, regions. That kind of thing. That all worked. Right click go to polygon. That wasn't hooked up for, for that yet. Single polygon selection was working though. 
adjusting. This is kind of fun. Vertex. You can drag and rotate scale. Going into the splines on the vertex, you can actually change the tension on here. Tension, let's see. Oh, there we go. It's been a while since I've used this, so the, con the clicking conventions are a little different. Uh, kind of a kind of a neat little system here. It wasn't as direct as the handles, but it was it worked. Continuity. Just that control there kind of diverges the the vectors. Bias will kind of, will I think basically rotate. Yeah, or okay, swing them back and out. Okay. You can turn them into a line, a linear or to a, a, the standard curve tension continuity bias parameters. And then there's some stuff in here for shape assignment for the lofting process that doesn't actually work. It's just that the choice tree pops out its vo its uh, uh, its uh, ID so that we could figure out what, you know what was needed to be hooked up. Uh, let's see. There's uh, the views are pretty much. You'll see this is pretty much the the way it wound up in the final version. This this didn't change much at all. Um, they are it just isn't hooked up. I was just getting it ready. We could uh, set these up, but not not change the views. Uh, the 3D modeler that was our lofter. Uh, that wasn't even there wasn't anything hooked up in here. I don't think at all. Very very early. Yeah, nothing's really hooked up. And then the 3D editor. We have places in here for making things, but I don't think any of them are hooked up. Nope. You see, it's very early. There's places where we had spots for texture assignment, things like that. And the interface w wasn't even co close to design yet. We just put in dummy selections. This was um, almost a year. I may, it was, I'd say almost a year before Dan Silva uh, entered the 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 group where he and he of course did the original keyframer but none of that choreography i think that's what we were going to call the keyframer that wasn't in there there was a camera section which we wound up taking out and lighting that all got integrated into the 3d editor the renderer of course was there uh, this it was it was actually a separate module in the original design in fact the all these wound up being separate models. The the shaper, lofter and editor were a module. The keyframer was going to be a module and the renderer and materials I think were going to be modules and they all they swapped in and out of memory and it was a real pain to use. And we, we got rid of that about three months before release. Re re architected the program run under a DOS extender and it was all one program which was a, a godsend. It was way better than what what might have been But uh, that's pretty much it. We that we didn't really have too much working in this. There were some some things hooked up, obviously, like this uh, rendered background selection was there. Uh, procedure, interesting. Uh, that that was changed. <laughs> but uh, it's just a, an interesting little uh, little program. The current status, you know, objects, and stuff like that. Of course, none of that's actually f hooked up yet. Uh, none of the, I don't think we have any of the, no, it is actually hooked up, but it doesn't really work right. Uh, viewport rotation. A lot of the stuff you'll, you'll, if you've used 3D Studio DOS, it looks familiar, and clearly the interface uh, didn't evolve too much from where we started. But the, uh, this is quite early, and you can, I think the fun part is seeing wh how this command column system worked versus the way it ended up in the final thing. But this uh, this ran under straight DOS. It was uh, using an overlay linker. It was using Microsoft's uh, compiler with an overlay, overlay linker so we could have, uh, it, you know, it, it would swap code in and out of memory as needed. We actually wound up ch changing that shortly before release. So we changed over to the high C compiler and uh, the DOS extender from Farlap. And that was a like I said, it was a real godsend. It was a, a great move. 
it was a it took Dan and me about a week of pretty intensive coding at Dan's house to to finish that up and get it get it switched over and it was it made a huge difference in the workflow of the program but that's pretty much it just wanted to let you see how this thing how this thing worked uh, it was a pretty early prototype a uh, little piece of history and uh, uh, it, was, it was fun to look, go back and look at it and I was, I was really really pleased it actually still ran